In this tutorial, we take a look at the Toolpath template feature, which is designed to save time in creating toolpaths for sets of vectors in similar jobs. We're going to show you how we can achieve this by organising vectors into layers and setting up the toolpaths to use the automatic vector selection option, where we associate the vectors in the layers to the toolpath. If you find yourself creating the same jobs over and over again, you may find that creating a toolpath template will really help you save time in the long run. So let's go to File, Close, and we're going to open an existing file. And from the project folder, we're going to open the sample cabinet.crv file. And so here we've got a set of vectors that have been specifically created for this demonstration to show you how to set up a toolpath template, which we can use on similar jobs in the future. We don't have to use vectors like we have here that were originally created in the specialist cabinet design package. We can also create our own vectors within the software. Now the key to creating a toolpath template is in the organisation of our vectors. So let's go into the layers tab. And so you can see in our example here we have quite a lot of layers and each of these layers have vectors relating to a certain type of toolpath. Now the way that we want to organise our vectors is to group them by how we plan to cut them and then we can look at using the automatic vector selector option in the toolpath to select the certain types of vectors from a particular layer. Now the layers that you can see on screen have been imported along with the vectors that come in a DXF format from this Cabinet Maker's design package, where it's retained that layer information. And so any further cabinets that I decide to make in the future in this particular software, when I come to import them in, it will have the same layer information and the vectors relating to those layers. So that when we do come to utilise the toolpath template, it's going to look for the particular vectors that we specify on the particular layer that we have selected and then apply the toolpath to them, which ultimately in the long run will save us a lot of time. So let's take a look at the layers and see what we've got here. So at the top we've got three layers that represent various holes. And each one of these layers is going to have a different toolpath associated with it. For instance, all of the shelf holes are going to be cut using the drilling toolpath, cut into let's say a quarter of an inch. And then all of the draw holes are also using the drilling toolpath, but they're on a separate layer because I may plan to cut them deeper or shallower than the shelf holes. Then we have six different layers that represent various different dados. And again, each one of these layers is going to have a different toolpath associated with it. Even though they might all have the same settings specified in the relating toolpaths, it's handy to keep them organised separately in case one day we decide to change the cut settings to one of the dados, then we don't have to manually edit the toolpaths for the other dados that have different cut depths. And so it makes sense to keep them all separate. Now looking at all of the layers, we can see that there are vectors on each one of those layers represented by this icon to the left of them. We can see that there's vectors on the actual page. If I double click on these, you'll see that the vectors for that layer are actually highlighted in our job. I can do that to all the different layers here, so I'm just double clicking on the page icon and then we're able to see the actual vectors that are on the layer that we've double clicked on. Not only can I double click on the page but I could also look at right clicking and then use the option here to select layer vectors. You see those vectors are highlighted there and I could do that to the name as well. So right click on the name, select layer vectors and you'll see that they've been selected there. See at the moment the active layer is the back bottom dado as that's in bold. It's telling me that this is the currently active layer. And we can just click on the layers to make the other layers active layers like so. So now what we're going to do, we're going to look at sizing up some of the vectors to decide what type of toolpath we're going to be applying to them. For example, if we just click on, say, this vector here, 
You'll see highlighted at the bottom there that we're provided with vector information. So it's displaying the width, the height. So we've got a width of 0.65, height of 23. And this vector currently resides on the bottom blind dado layer. Now I know that I'd like to use a 3 8 inch end mill to cut this part out. And the decimal value for the 3 8 inch end mill is 0.375. Now we know that the width of the vector, which is 0.625, highlighted at the bottom there, isn't more than twice the diameter of the tool that I intend to use. So we could look at using a profile toolpath to cut this on the inside. And this would be much quicker and more efficient for me to use a profile pass on the inside of the vector than if I was to pocket this. If we select this vector over here, and so we can see highlighted there we have a width of 14.75 and a height of 0 0.7820. And so for this particular vector we'd look at using a pocket toolpath on this as the height is more than double the diameter of the tool that we plan to use. And this really is more for efficiency from a machining point of view. Now I've gone around and I've checked all the vectors on all of the layers and I've also ordered the layers for organisation where the top three dado layers will be using a profile and toolpath and the bottom three dado layers will be using a pocketing toolpath. So now we have our layers organised, we know what toolpaths we're going to use for the various layers. We can go and switch over to the toolpaths tab to create those toolpaths. So to do that, let's use this icon here to switch over to the toolpath commands. And then over into the material setup, we're just going to just check and verify the settings that we've got in here so that they're safe and appropriate for my machine and material that I'm using. So material thickness is 3 quarters of an inch. We're setting the XY position in the lower left hand corner. I would set Z0 off the material surface. Check over the rapid Z gaps above the material. The home start position is safe and appropriate for what we're doing along with the Z gap above the material. And then we could simply go ahead and press OK. So we're going to start with a simple drilling toolpath. We need to make sure that we have no vectors selected. So we're going to use the automatic vector selection option to automatically select our vectors for us within the toolpath. So if I just click into the white space, that way I know that we have no vectors selected there. And then we could come over to the drilling toolpath. And so the start depth for this is at zero, so that's on top of the material surface. Cut depth for this, we're going to go down half an inch there. Tool, let's just use the select option to open up the tool database. In this case, this is the tool I like to use, the quarter inch drill, and I can check over the settings that we've got for this tool to ensure that they're safe and appropriate for what I'm doing. So I'm going to go ahead and press OK there. And then if we come down to the bottom here, you'll see we have this vector selection option. It's currently set to manual, and that's where we'd actually go in and select our own vectors. And so we're going to use this selector option, and this is the tool that we're going to use to set the toolpath up to select its own vectors to machine. So going into the selector here, this will open up the vector selector form. And so the vector selector enables us to specify various filters which will enable the software to select the vectors for us based on the rules that we apply in this form. So the type of vectors that you can select are open vectors or closed vectors. Now in this case this toolpath is going to cut the hinge holes. So we know that the hinge holes are going to have circle vectors. So we're going to use the closed vectors option and within that closed vectors option we have all closed vectors or only circles. As I said the hinge holes are circles so we're going to use the only circles option. Then we have a various other options within the circle so we can select all circles. I'll be a bit more specific by using select all circles matching the tool diameter or select circles matching uh, a circle diameter with a tolerance. In this case, we're just going to go with select all circles here. 
Then we need to tell the software which layer to pick these circles up from. In this case, we're going to come over to the right hand side, so you can select vectors on all visible layers, or we can just specify the layers by just checking the box. So we're going to check the hinge hole box, as that's the layer that I want to get all of these circles from. And if I just move this form over, you'll see that it's highlighted those vectors that it's found based on the criteria here and within that layer. I can also see I have the cut layer selected so I'm just going to undraw that as I only want to find the vectors with the hinge holes from the hinge holes layer. Now if we want to use this efficiently in a toolpath template we need to associate all of these rules with this particular toolpath. So if we then go to use this when we load in a toolpath template in future cabinets that we may make, when it loads in that toolpath it will remember to select the vectors according to these filters whereby it's going to select all circles in the hinge holes layer. So we must remember to check this option to associate that with this toolpath. And then once we've done that, rest assured that when we recalculate this toolpath, it will look for any vectors that abide by these rules within the hinge holes layer. So let's just close that down. I'm just going to go to our layers list and we're just going to go to the top there. And I'm just going to click on the hinge holes layer, click on it again, just so that the hinge holes layer is selected. And now I'm just going to right click and I'm just going to copy that text. And then we're going to come over into the name, we're just going to call this one Drill and then I'm going to paste in the layer name there and then we could go ahead and press Calculate. And then we can preview that toolpath and you can see those holes have been placed in our preview there. You'll notice that they're filled with a yellow colour and that's because I've selected the global fill colour to fill that with yellow just so it's easy for us to see that. So let's go ahead and tile our windows. We're going to close out of the preview toolpath form. And now we're going to look at creating the toolpath for the shelf holes. So again, let's go back into the drilling toolpath. And so you'll notice that the software has remembered the same settings that we used last time, which is handy in this situation because I'm going to go with the exact same settings as we did before. So half an inch, quarter inch drill bit, I'm going to come down and use the selector option here. Again, we're going to go to the same settings, so close vectors, only circles, select all circles. And we're not going to do the hinge holes layer, but this time we're going to do the shelf holes layer. And then we must remember to associate all of these rules with this toolpath. So we use the associate with toolpath option, close out there. I'm just going to go to the layer drop down and I'm just going to click twice on the shelf holes, right click just to copy the name. And I'm going to input that into our name. So I'll call that one drill, right click, paste, shelf holes. And then we could go ahead, calculate that and we could go ahead and preview it so you can see the holes that it's picked up there. So let's just close out. Okay, so this time we're going to look at the draw holes. So again, back into the drilling toolpath. And again, we're going to go with the exact same settings. So let's go into the selector option here. Close vectors, only circles, select all circles. And we're going to select the draw holes layer. Again, we must associate all of these rules with this toolpath. So check that option. Close that down to our layer drop down. Click on draw holes just to get the name there. So click on it again, right click, copy that. And then in the name, criteria here we're just going to paste that name in and we could go ahead and calculate that and then we could preview that we can see it's been added there so let's just close out here so now that we've created the holes toolpaths we can move on to the dados now as I said the first lot of dados will be created with the profile toolpath using the 3 8 inch end mill tool so let's go over into the profile toolpath so here we need to specify our cut depth. So we're going to start this at zero. Cut depth, we're going to cut down 3 8 so we're going to put in 0.375 there. As I said, the tool I want to use is the 3 8 inch end mill. You can see it's actually currently selected. So I could look into the edit option just to check over the settings for this particular toolpath. Okay, I'm happy with those. I feel that they're safe and appropriate for what we're doing. So I could just go ahead and press OK. 
And you want to make sure that any of the settings in the software is safe and appropriate for your particular example that you're cutting. So you can see it's going to cut that in one pass. Now, as we mentioned earlier, we are going to cut on the inside of these dados. So we want to make sure that we machine on the inside here. And if you come down to the bottom of the form, again, we're going to go into the vector selector. And as we're working with dados, we're going to choose the closed vectors option. Now we know that the dados aren't circles, so we're going to use the all closed vectors option here. Moving over to the right, we want to make sure we check the right layer, so we're going to undraw, draw holes, and we're going to check the bottom blind dado. Again, we must make sure that we associate these rules with this toolpath, so we're going to check the associate with toolpath option, and we could go ahead and close that to our layers drop down, click on bottom blind dado, click on that again to highlight the text, and we can right click to copy that come over to our profile and then we're just going to paste in that name and so we're just copying the name for our own benefit so we know that what we are cutting. So we could go ahead and press calculate you can see it's calculated that there for us and we could go ahead and preview that. Okay so that looks good let's just close that down and again we're going to go back into the profile toolpath and we're going to go with the exact same settings, so cut depth of 3 8 of an inch using that 3 8 inch end mill, cutting on the inside, use the vector selector option, all closed vectors, all closed vectors here, selected layers only, undraw bottom blind dado, and then check the side blind dado, and then we want to associate all of these rules with this toolpath, then we can close that down into our layer drop down, click on side, blind dado, click on it again, right click to copy and then we'll come over to the name, delete the one and then paste in the side blind dado, calculate that and then we could go ahead and preview that and we could close that down, go back into the profile toolpath again, exact same settings, we're going to look at the last layer for the profile here. So we're going to use the selector option, same settings, we're just going to undraw the side blind dado and then select the top blind dado. Again we want to make sure we associate that with the toolpath. Close that down, into the layers, click on that one, right click to copy that and then we'll just paste that in. So we'll use the paste option and then we'll calculate that and then we could go ahead and preview that. So there we have so far all of the profile dados here. So let's just close out of the preview form and now we can look at the pocket dados as the width of the vectors were more than twice the diameter of that 3 8 inch tool. So let's go over into the pocket toolpath. So here again we need to specify our cut depths. So here we're going to have a start depth of 0, cutting down 3 8 of an inch. The tool I want to use is the 3 8 inch end mill. We can see it's currently selected there. I'm just going to use the edit options to glance over the settings that we've got in here and maybe make changes to this particular toolpath without having to make permanent changes to the settings in the tool within the tool database. So here we can see we've got a pass depth of a quarter of an inch, step over of 0.15. Now I'm going to look at increasing that step over to 0.25 so that with every feed I'm now removing 26% more material than I would have previously. So then we could go ahead and press OK. I'll just work our way down the form. In this case, we're going to do this in a raster strategy, and we're going to have the raster angle set to zero so that it goes from left to right as these are horizontal. Again, let's come over to the vector selector. So we're going to click on that. Make sure that all closed vectors is selected, whereby we're selecting all the closed vectors as we're working with rectangular shapes here. Come over to the layers, we're going to uncheck top blind dado and switch on the back bottom dado. Again, we must ensure that we associate these rules with this toolpath. So we check that option there, close that down to our layer drop down, click on the back bottom dado, click on that again, right click to copy that, and we're going to go call that one pocket, right click to paste back bottom dado, and then we can calculate that and we could go ahead and preview that toolpath. 
Okay, so now that's done, we could close that out and we'll go back into the pocket toolpath. And we can go with the same settings. Again, if we press edit, you'll see that it's remembered the edited path step for this particular toolpath. So we'll go ahead, press OK there. And we'll go to the selector option here. Again, all close vectors, undraw back bottom dado, and then highlight the back side dado. Associate all of these rules with this toolpath. Close that down into the layers. I'm just going to bring that down. Click on backside dado, click on that again to highlight the text, right click, copy, and then we're just going to paste that name in there, calculate that, preview that toolpath, you can see how that looks. Close that down, we'll go back into the pocket toolpath for the last uh, dado here, so into the pocket toolpath, exactly the same settings, using the selector close vectors, undraw backside dado and then draw the back top dado and associate those rules with that toolpath and then we'll just get the layer name from the layer manager here right click, copy that name and then into the actual name itself we're going to paste that in press calculate and we could go ahead and preview that now this may seem like a lot of work what we're doing here but it will pay off as all we have to do is create this set of toolpaths once, save out the toolpath template and then when we import vectors that were created from our design package we simply apply our toolpath template, recalculate the toolpaths to the layers that we've imported and so it will make work life a lot simpler and faster in the long run. It just takes a little bit of time in the initial setup. So let's move on to the last toolpath, which is the cutout toolpath. So we're just going to close this down. I'm going to go over into the profile toolpath here. Start depth is going to be at zero. Cut depth, we're going to cut all the way through the material. So we could just type in Z equals, and the software will input the value that we entered as our material thickness at the start of our job. So you can see we've got three quarter inch cut depth in there. So the tool we're going to use is the 3 8 inch end mill. Again, we could use the edit options to check over the settings so that they're safe and appropriate. I'm happy with those, so we could go ahead and press OK. As we're machining the profiles, we want to make sure that we cut on the outside of those vectors. And we could work our way down, and we could go to the vector selector option here where we're going to select all closed vectors. So these profile vectors are closed vectors. So using the all closed option, I'm just going to undraw the back top dado, check the cut layer. And if we just move that, we can see it's highlighted all of the cutout vectors there. Okay, so ensuring that we have the closed vectors selected is beneficial as you can ensure that you're only cutting on the outside of a closed vector, whereas if they were open, depending on their start and end position, determines which side of the vector it cuts on the outside or on the inside. Okay, so we've got all closed vectors and we can see them all highlighted there and we know that we're going to machine on the outside here. So if that layer checked, we need to associate the rules with that layer, with that toolpath and then we could just go ahead, close that down, we'll give that a name, so I'll come up here, select the cut and then I could just copy that, come down here and just simply paste that in and then we could go ahead and calculate that. Okay, so you can see the preview here, and then if we actually simulate that, we can preview that toolpath. And so here we could go ahead and save out all of the toolpaths and run them on our machine. Now the whole purpose of creating our toolpaths using this method of association with specific vectors and layers was to make use of the toolpath template feature. Now this layout is handy if we wanted to cut multiples of this design or we could use the nesting feature to nest all of the parts onto numerous sheets and as we've associated particular vectors from each layer to each of the toolpaths all we'd then have to do is recalculate all the toolpaths which would create a set of toolpaths laid out over multiple sheets where we use the sheet space efficiently. Now to learn more about nesting there is a dedicated tutorial that teaches you all about how to nest parts and you can find that video in the related video section for this tutorial in the tutorial browser. So creating a toolpath template now that we have 
all of the toolpaths and they're all associated with vectors on particular layers, we could look at saving a toolpath template. So we could look at saving an individual toolpath as its own template, or we could look at saving all visible toolpaths as one big template. And in the future, when you come to use it, even if the corresponding layers for the toolpaths don't exist, there's no need to worry as the software will know just to ignore it and go on to creating the next available toolpaths for you. So in this case, we're going to look at saving all toolpaths to one file. So to do that, we need to make all the toolpaths visible by checking this box here. And then we're going to come over and use this option to save all visible toolpaths as a template. And so in the project folder, we're just going to go with the default name here, sample cabinet dot toolpath template. And then we could just simply press save. And so with that template saved, let's go ahead and save the file. And then we're going to look at opening a new file where we'll import vectors that have been created in a Cabinet Maker's software to demonstrate how we'd apply the toolpath template that we just saved out to future jobs. So let's go to File, Save As, and in the Project folder, I'm going to call this one Sample Cabinet Toolpaths, and then press Save, and you can access that from the Project folder. So let's just close this down, go to File, Close, and now we're going to demonstrate how we'd go about creating a new file with all the exported vectors that we have created in the Cabinet Design software. Now some Cabinet packages may have the option to export the vectors as DXF files, and others may export each individual vector as a DXF, and so we may end up with a lot of DXF files to import into Vectric software, where it may not be done on a per layer basis. So let me show you, if we go to open an existing file, and in our project folder we've got the Cabinet Design Files folder, and if we open that, you see that we have lots of individual DXF files and they're still using the same layers that we created our toolpath template with. So we're going to look at taking advantage of one of the gadgets that comes with the software to process them all into the software. So let's just cancel that. And so to do this, we're going to come over to the Gadgets menu drop-down, click on that, and you'll see that we have various gadgets that are pre-installed in the software. Now, gadgets are little programs or routines that automate certain processes, and you can find out more about different gadgets that are available for your software at gadgets.betric.com. Now, the one we're going to use is the DXF Batch Processor. So if we just click on that, and so the DXF batch processor is going to create our job and import all of the DXF files that we specify in this directory. So if we use the choose option here, then we can locate our folder, so working with the nested cabinet files, and we can just press OK there, and it will input that directory here. Um, we can also use this option here to process subdirectories. I don't believe there are any here, so we'll just leave that checked anyway. Okay, so the layout control, so this is where we s specify the number of drawings in our row, gap between the drawings in X and Y. So we're going to put uh, three for the drawings in a row, gap between drawings in X will go four inches, and in Y we'll also go with four inches, and this is just to determine the space between each of the vectors. Then we move on to our actual drawing dimensions. So this is the size of our part. In this case, it'll be the size of our sheets. So here we're going to work 96 by 48, three quarter inch material, working in inches, we'll set the XY to the lower left hand corner, and our Z origin is going to be set on the material surface. So once we're happy with that, we could just simply go ahead and press OK. And so the software knows that we haven't loaded a job and based on the settings we entered in the batch processor form, it's going to create a job for us. So we'll just simply press OK here. You can see the number of files processed. It's processed 56 files and brought them into our job. We could go ahead, press OK. Let's just use this option here just to zoom to the drawing limits and we can see all of the different files here. Now these vectors are actually over spilling our sheet size so what we need to do is organize our vectors onto separate sheets of material. 
So to do that, we're just going to look at selecting all of these vectors. I'm just going to draw and drag a box around all of those vectors. So now they are all highlighted here. And then we're going to look at nesting them. So with those vectors selected, let's come over to the nesting tool. Now we're not going to go into too much detail here, but for more information on nesting there is a tutorial dedicated to the nesting feature, and you can find that in the related video section for this tutorial. So let's start the top here with the tool and clearance settings. So the tool diameter we're going to put in 3 eighths of an inch, clearance for this is going to be quarter of an inch, border gap we're going to keep that at zero here. Okay, part nesting options, so we're going to rotate the parts to find the best fit in a rotation step angle of 90 degrees. So we'll just leave that as 90 in there. Okay, we're going to nest from the lower left along the Y axis. Number of copies, we only want one copies of uh, all of our parts here. So you could just apply that and then we could just simply go ahead and preview that and you'll see what it's done, it's created seven separate sheets for us. So we could just simply go ahead and press OK. And to switch between sheets, I just simply double click on the sheet and you'll see that it just moves my active sheet to the sheet I had selected. For instance, if we go back to sheet one and I double click on that, it makes our active sheet sheet one. So now that we've organised our vectors onto different sheets, let's open up the toolpaths tab. I'm just going to ping that open and then actually pin that out. As I'd like to uh, keep the design tab open just so I can take a look at the layers here. And so you can see that all the layers that we are working with are the same ones that we had in the previous file. We've got a few extra layers here and I'm judging by the icons I can see that those layers actually have no vectors on them. So what I could do is just look at deleting those. So you'll see we've got all of the layers that we worked with in that previous session. So now what we can do is we can just go ahead and load in our toolpath template. So we're currently working with sheet one here. So here we're going to come over to the toolpath tab and use this option to load the toolpath template. So from the project folder we're going to open that toolpath template that we saved out. So the sample cabinet toolpath template and then we could just simply go ahead and press open. And so you'll see listed in the toolpaths list here, we've got all of the toolpaths that we created for our particular layers list. And so when we come to recalculate toolpaths, it will recalculate any toolpaths relating to the sheet that we have active at the moment. So we can see that sheet one is currently the active sheet. So let's go over and we'll look at recalculating all the toolpaths for this sheet. So when I click on that, you'll see we are now presented with an error message. One or more errors occurred while recalculating the toolpaths. And so it's telling us that the following toolpaths listed here didn't have anything to recalculate with. And that's because for this particular sheet, we only have vectors that belong to the profile layer. And we can see that only the profile cut toolpath is visible, which is good as we will always know what toolpaths we have available to us per sheet. So it's telling us that none of these toolpaths exist on this sheet. The only one that we can recalculate is the actual profile cut. So I'll just simply go ahead and press OK there. So here we could just simply go and preview that toolpath if we wanted. We could just go straight to saving that toolpath where we just simply use the save option here. And then what we could do is we could give that a name, maybe call it something like sheet one profile cutout, or we may want to save it in a folder called sheet one, purely for an organization point of view. And then what we could do is we can move on to our next sheet and then recalculate the toolpath. So to do that, we'll just simply close that down. I'm just going to undraw all the toolpaths here. We'll go to sheet two, so I'll double click on sheet two, and again, use the recalculate all toolpaths option it's telling us that these uh, top blind dado and back top dado do not exist on the sheet. So I'll OK that and then you can see all the toolpaths that we have visible here. And again, we could go and save those sheets out.
Now you would have to do this for every sheet. If you find you are working with a lot of sheets and you want to take advantage of the Toolpath template, we do have another great gadget called Apply Template to All Sheets, where you would import the vectors as we did to start with, then we'll go ahead and nest them, and then rather than going in straight away to load in that Toolpath template, you'd navigate to the Toolpath template gadget under your Gadgets menu drop-down, and the gadget would automatically apply the Toolpath template to all the sheets for you automatically with the option to also create the post-processor code directly without having to save all the individual toolpaths. And it does create the toolpaths for you where the naming convention will have S for sheet followed by a number to indicate which sheet it's on. For example, a toolpath that has S1 in front of it means it's on sheet 1, S2 would mean sheet 2 and so on. And so the apply template to all sheets can be found on the Gadgets site at gadgets.vetric.com. So that completes this tutorial on working with nested cabinet files. Thank you for watching.